Flaps in or in oral surgery. The term flap indicates a section of soft tissue that one is outlined by a surgical incision, two carries its own blood supply, three allows surgical access to underlying tissues, four can be replaced in original position, five can be maintained with sutures and is expected to heal. Principles of flap design. The base of the flap must usually be broader than the free margin to preserve inadequate blood supply to prevent ischemic necrosis of entire flap or portions of it. The flap must provide adequate access and visualization of the surgical site without tearing or bruising of the flap and damage to the adjacent structures. Retracting instrument of the flap must rest on healthy bone to avoid trauma so as provide healing with minimal inflammation, pain and subsequent scarring of the tissues. There must be enough flap reflection to permit the retractor to hold the flap without tension. Incision should lie towards healthy bone so that after closure the suture line lies on solid healthy bone, as incisions closed over a dead space tend to break down. The flap should be a full thickness mucoperior steel flap. This means that the flap includes the surface mucosa, submucosa, and periosteum because the periosteum is the primary tissue responsible for bone healing. The flap should be designed to avoid injury to local vital structures in the area of the surgery. The vertical release incision should be made at an obtuse angle to the horizontal one to have a flap with a broad base with respect to the apex. Types of flaps Trapeze oil flap Triangular flap Envelope flap Semilunar flap Pedicle flaps Trapeze oil flap The trapeze oil flap is formed by a horizontal incision along the gingivae and two oblique vertical releasing incisions extending to the buccal vestibule. The vertical releasing incisions always extend to the interdental papilla and never to the center of the labial or buccal surface of the tooth. This ensures the integrity of the gingiva proper, because if the incision were to begin at the center of the tooth, contraction after healing would leave the cervical area of the tooth exposed. Trapeze oil flap Trapeze oil flap Advantages Provides excellent access. Allows surgery to, to be performed on more than one or two teeth. Produces no tension in the tissues. Allows easy reapproximation of the flap to its original position and hastens the healing process. Disadvantages produces a defect in the attached gingiva, recession of gingiva. Triangular flap. This flap is the result of an L-shaped incision with a horizontal incision made along the gingival sulcus and a vertical or oblique incision. The vertical incision begins approximately at the vestibular fold and extends to the interdental papilla of the gingiva. The triangular flap is performed labially or bically on both jaws and is indicated in the surgical removal of root tips, small cysts, and apicoectomies. Triangular flap. Triangular flap. Advantages ensures an adequate blood supply, satisfactory visualization, very good stability and reapproximation. It is easily modified with a small releasing incision, or an additional vertical incision, or even lengthening of the horizontal incision. Disadvantages limited access to long roots, tension is created when the flap is held with a retractor, and it causes a defect in the attached gingiva envelope flap. This type of flap is the result of an extended horizontal incision along the cervical lines of the teeth. The incision is made in the gingival sulcus and extends along four or five teeth. The tissue connected to the cervical lines of these teeth and the interdental papillae is thus frayed. The envelope flap is used for surgery of incisors, premolars and molars, on the labial or buccal and palatal or lingual surface and is usually indicated when the surgical procedure involves the cervical lines of the teeth. Envelope flap Advantages Avoidance of vertical incision and easy reapproximation to original position Disadvantages Difficult reflection, mainly palatally, great tension with a risk of the ends tearing, limited visualization in apicoectomies, limited access, possibility of injury of palatal vessels and nerves, defect of attached gingiva flap resulting from Y-shaped incision An incision is made along the midline of the palate, as well as two anterolateral incisions, which are anterior to the canines. This type of flap is indicated in surgical procedures involving the removal of small exostoses. Semilunar flap. This flap is the result of a curved incision, which begins just beneath the vestibular fold and has a bow-shaped course with the convex part towards the attached gingiva. 
The lowest point of the incision must be at least half a centimeter from the gingival margin, so that the blood supply is not compromised. Each end of the incision must extend at least one tooth over on each side of the area of bone removal. The semilunar flap is used in apicoectomies and removal of small cysts and root tips. Semilunar flap, semilunar flap. Pedicle flaps The three main types of pedicle flaps used for closure of an oroantral. Communication are, one buckle, two palatal, three bridge flaps. Pedicle flaps are suitable for closure of oroantral communication. Pedicle bridge flap used for closure of oroantral communication. Pedicle bridge flap a buckle B palatal. These techniques are suitable for closure of oroantral communication. Thank you for watching like and subscribe. Dentistry Knowledge